This conference will now be recorded. Well, good morning, everyone. First of all, I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning uh, for this very important uh, uh, Nacogdoches County Chamber Stakeholder Conference call. Uh, I'm Wayne Mitchell. For those that don't know who I, who, who I am, uh, this is a big day for the Chamber, and you'll hear more about that a little later uh, uh, when we get to the reports from the Chamber. Uh, I want to remind you this call is being recorded, and members of the media have been invited to participate as well. We want to welcome them. Uh, Josh, it's good to have you on board as usual. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Also, that uh, uh, if if you wouldn't mind keeping your phones on mute until uh, we're ready for the presentation, that would be very helpful to us. I'm pleased to uh, welcome uh, three folks representing the NAC Now Group, which is which is the uh, private group that is uh, uh, out working like crazy to, to promote the uh, bond issue, the seven bond issue questions uh, uh, that we have out there. Uh, uh, and uh, they, they're going to give us kind of a, an update as to where we are uh, and, uh, and what the bond issues will be doing for Nacogdoches. Uh, we have Lily Fu with us today. We also have John Callahan with us today. Uh, and uh, and I'm also pleased to, to welcome my big Brandy Cartwright and Ron Collins to, to chat with us this morning about this very important issue. Uh, with that in mind, I will turn it over. Lily, uh, do I turn it over to you to get started? That's correct. Thank you, Wayne. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you for your time and sitting here and listening about what's happening to our city. So I'm Lily Fu, and I am in what Wayne just introduced, Ron and John are joining us, and so is Brandy Cartwright. We've, uh, over the past year, we started off as citizens going into something called CNAC, and that's a capital needs advisory group and committee. The city appointed us so that we could look over issues that the city was facing with over $200 million worth of needs so that we can improve our infrastructure. What we did was we spent several hours um, every week or every other so that we could evaluate and tour everything that we needed to tour to see what truly is facing our city. And there are things that were just completely appalling um, that we thought really needs to be addressed. And in the end, we had a unanimous consensus of 20 members that came up with a $44 million proposition for the city bonds. And we have now formed NAC Now so that everybody can be educated about what these bond propositions mean, how it affects us, and what it means for taxpayers. On this committee, we have people in the following order. Erica Toller is our president. I'm the treasurer. Ron Collins is the assistant treasurer. Maggie Forbes is the secretary. We have John Anderson, Dr. Stanley, Olivia Carizzi, Betty Shin, John Mast, Brandy Cartwright, who's on our call, uh, John Callahan, who will be presenting today, Brandy Bryant, Terry Mooring, and Mike Strong. And so we are going out to raising funds so that we can just educate and inform every single person in this city about what all these propositions mean. And so with that, I will let John go ahead and take the presentation. Thanks, Lily. Uh, appreciate the chamber uh, letting us present. So as, uh, as Lily said, our city, uh, we were commissioned uh, as a committee to take a look at the city's infrastructure and the, has a, a list of over $200 million worth of, of capital need projects. Um, and we spent uh, about seven months, uh, untold number of hours. We met in a minimum, I don't even know the hours, so I don't want to lie to you, but we met a lot uh, over the seven months period and went out and toured all the city's facilities uh, and got to see the actual condition and what those needs were. And as a committee, uh, we recommended to the city council that there were $44 million worth of infrastructure projects uh, that our community needed. And if I can get this slide to go to the next one, that'd be great. There we go. Um, the committee had 20 members appointed by the city council um, from representing all the wards in the city. Um, as I said, we spent seven months looking at these things. And I think it's critical to note that um, I think 
everybody on that committee came in with a different perspective, um, but we had a unanimous recommendation to the city on this $44 million uh, proposal to the city council. Um, after we presented our findings and recommendations to the city council, uh, the council voted unanimously uh, to proceed. Um, and I think it's important to, to point out that what we've presented to the city and now the city's gonna present to the voters are the most basic needs uh, for our community. Um, if a property owner is 65 or older, there will be no increase in property taxes on their homestead. So if you're 65 or older and have a homestead, or if you're disabled and have a homestead, uh, there will be no tax increase. Um, the average value, taxable value of a homestead in Nacogdoches is $162,254. So using that, uh, that mean value, uh, the tax increase would be $252 a year or $21 a month. For those who are under 65 or are not disabled and have a homestead. Um, and we can provide you with some other numbers to help calculate what's the cost, you know, if you know how much your your property is worth. Um, this is a lot uh, for the money. Um, the forty four million dollars can make some significant com improvements in the community. Um, airport improvements, uh, better fire protection through uh, improvements to our fire stations. I think everyone here has driven down, uh, I'll use Regay Street as an example, when it rains, it's like you're going through a water park. Um, our storm drainage system is really falling apart. Uh, the office maintenance building at Sunset Cemetery needs renovations. Our Parks and recreation facilities, particularly our parks, um, are in dire need of repair. And it's kind of like if you've got something, you you ought to take care of it. And, and our parks have been neglected for, for decades. Um, improved city streets. The city of Nacogdoches has 144 miles of city streets. Um, there are a lot of other streets and roadways that go through Nacogdoches, uh, state highways, state farm to market roads that are not owned or maintained by the city. So North Street, Appleby Sand, East Austin, Star Avenue, Durst, um, those are state highways or state farm to market roads. Um, the city streets, um, think of the streets that are in your neighborhood, uh, Mound Street, Regay Street, those are, are the city streets uh, when we when we talk about streets, there's always confusion about that. Um, sidewalks, we have quite a few sidewalks in Nacogdoches. There are some areas uh, where there is considerable foot traffic that are underserved by sidewalks. And then the sidewalks that we do have over time, um, they're uneven, they're dangerous, uh, and a potential liability for the city. And John, I want to clarify some of the things. People are asking about North Street sidewalks. That's funded by TxDOT. And so those, that was a project funded by the state. We need and are looking at sidewalks for the city as an overall for improvement for traffic, uh, foot traffic, and for health for people. If they choose to walk, it would encourage walking. It would just make a better holistic picture for our city in general. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Lily. Yeah, and that's true too. Uh, I think everyone's aware recently there was a lot of sidewalk work that was done on Star Avenue by Stephen F. Austin State University. That was also a TxDOT project. Um, early voting uh, starts on October the 23rd, it goes through November the 3rd uh, at the County Courthouse Annex. And election day is on November the 2nd at our regular voting precincts. And if you're not registered to vote, the last day to register to vote is October the 10th. Um, one of the things that that we as a committee feels important to this these propositions uh, are endorsed as i mentioned unanimously by the current city council uh, we have numerous former city leaders who have endorsed uh, these bond propositions uh, numerous civic organizations have endorsed the bond propositions 
uh, the committee of 20 citizens that were charged to investigate uh, what needs to be worked on by the city has endorsed the propositions and numerous neighborhood groups. So there is a broad support across the community uh, for these bonds. Um, for decades, uh, Nacogdoches has, uh, and, and this is not a bad thing, uh, but it had bad consequences. We have been an extremely frugal community. Um, it, it's been a long time since the city has had uh, any bonds that have been focused on infrastructure. Um, and our infrastructure is failing. Um, if, if we don't start to do something now, um, if we wait much longer, in some cases, the cost is going to double or triple. Um, and the problem is only going to get worse. And uh, we would really appreciate uh, the support of the of the chamber uh, in in supporting these bond propositions. It it is going to have uh, overall a positive economic impact on the city, uh, which will in turn help businesses and help commerce. So um, happy. Uh, we didn't want to dwell a lot on the presentation, but extremely happy to entertain, answer questions, discuss anything that that the uh, that the chamber members have regarding the bond propositions. John, uh, before you go to the questions, can you go back to the slide with all the bond propositions? Just go a little bit more in depth in it. Sure. I forgot to mention an important member, our Mayor, mayor Emeritus, Judy McDonald's also on this committee. And so um, if she was a former mayor and she's looking at this, she rode along with us on the tour buses and everything, which is the city vehicles to get to all these stations. Um, I just wanted to absolutely mention her. Um, so anyways, for the airport improvements, a lot of people are looking at that going, why do we as taxpayers need to spend money on airport improvements? This is not just for private citizens who own planes. This is for the city. We have a lot of corporations that use the airport that fly in jets that can't handle the inflow of traffic. These are all tiered, okay? So we are looking at tier one, tier two, and tier three by the city on what needs to be evaluated first. This became a proposition because it was funded um, essentially by TxDOT. We would have a matching program to it. There is traffic congestions for the fueling restation that needs to happen. The fueling restation, we make money off of gas and jet fuel from these planes. We have medics that come through, that fly through, the military comes through, there's training that comes through, and HCH, HCH Aviation, which is a program in, uh, at SFA that is newly started. They have over a hundred members now. The traffic on there is getting to be so much. They're building a second hangar, and this is something to improve um, our economy just by inviting a certain segment of students to SFA for that. And so if we're looking towards the future, that's something that I think in educating the people of Nacogdoches on why we need something like this. The better fire protection, that is for fire stations uh, that we have looked at to see which ones have needs that need to be drastically improved. The one on East Main that has been there forever and is falling apart, I mean, there are pictures of this. I said, well, the firefighters are looking at it and going, well, we're okay in this. Well, if we as a city are looking and saying, you're okay in these conditions and deplorable conditions, we're not doing a good enough job in protecting you and serving our city. And I think that's shameful. And we have asked the fire chief, interim fire chief, to look at everything along with uh, the city manager who is um, interim, Keith Kiplinger, who was also the fire chief before to see what really needed to be evaluated because this was a big hullabaloo about what and how much money we needed to spend. And so they came up with a plan and this committee, the Capital Needs Advisory Committee, all conceded and had a consensus about what really we needed to spend money on. And so we wanna combine stations. We wanna make sure that they're fully staffed and combining a station does mean that. Um, we have more information on our website that will actually link you to all these details. If you want to drill into it later on, it's going to go to the city website with all factual information on it. Improved storm drainage. We all know we have failing infrastructure. Uh, one mistake, one little thing that can go wrong costs us half a million dollars. Steve Bartlett, our city engineer, has been so good about keeping us uh, in regards to budget on what we can do. But these things are deferred maintenance that has not been addressed, that need to be addressed. 
all right? The Sunset Cemetery renovations, a lot of people are thinking, what is that? Well, it's the Sunset Cemetery. It's where we go and we bury our loved ones. The building that we have right now is tiny. You cannot move around in it, much less sit in it. So if you're grieving and in bereavement, I don't think that our, our Nacogdoches residents want to come in and just have a standing meeting and, and knowing where to put their loved ones in the ground. And so that's something that is a very nominal thing in terms of amount, and I think it should be addressed because that is our cemetery. Well, upgraded parks, recreation, and facilities, a lot of people are thinking, well, what do we need parks for? Well, we have existing parks. We are not imp we are not building new parks. We are going to maintain those parks and build upon them so that they look good for our children. And in poorer segments of the community, which a lot of people don't even know that we have some parks out there, these are playgrounds that are rusted, that can't, they're falling apart. These children need to be physically active. They need a place to go and they need for family to go. Restrooms there are being rented right now by porta potties. That is $8,000 per porta potty when we could be spending money actually making restrooms for families to be safe in while their children use the restroom and adults use restrooms. I don't think that's a big ask. We, we initially, a lot of our, our members from this committee, 20 members, all had differing opinions. But when we saw what was going on, we all agreed that something needs to be done with the parks. All right, improved city streets. John talked a lot about that. Those are also graded by the city. And we look to see, the city has to make all these decisions. These are just bond propositions to fund the dollars to actually go to them. But we have failing infrastructure on that. And I think when you drive around, you can actually see that. And like we said on the sidewalks, we talked a little bit about that, but um, I just wanted to go ahead and let you guys know that these are what we are looking at. And now, if anybody doesn't have anything to say, Brandy or Ron, we will open it up for questions. Thank you, Lily, and thank you, John, for that uh, thorough presentation. Any questions, folks? Hey, hey, Wayne, before we get to that, I might just add a couple of little items to what Lily had said in regard to a few, a couple of these propositions. You know, the airport, um, when we heard the presentation from the airport, there was a need for about $15 million worth of improvements to the airport. And this $7.3 million that we are proposing uh, on that proposition you know, will be coupled with matching funds, just as Lily had said. So we can stretch that 7.3 million to roughly $15 million uh, to be able to accomplish pretty much everything that uh, we feel like is a need at the airport and get a, you know, basically a 50-50 split as far as the cost. It's, it's probably the best deal of all the propositions that we have because we are gonna get some federal or state support and we feel like the money is out there. We've been assured that that is able to be done. So it's a really, uh, you know, effective uh, proposition for us to do. Secondly, on the fire stations, especially with the combination of a couple of those, uh, the one at the hill of uh, um, East Austin, uh, excuse me, East uh, Main and uh, downtown, you know, in looking at that, the money spent to combine those two stations uh, we could, if, if we just remodeled what we have, we would spend that or more, you know, in doing that. So from, from that standpoint, it makes a whole lot of sense from an efficiency standpoint to combine those two fire stations together. It also positions the ladder truck much more strategically in the city uh, for downtown fire or for the college than where it is right now up on North Street. So um, there's a lot of things that that better prepare uh, the fire department to safely respond to uh, fires. And then also just some of the things that uh, we can't fix with those existing uh, fire stations as far as safety uh, and the way that they have to deal with the diesel fuel and all those kind of things uh, in uh, what they have now. Uh, city streets, I saw this on one of the questions in regard to, well, if my street is not on the list to be replaced, uh, then I may not vote for this. Well, keep in mind that we are spending $10 million in regard to street improvements. It gives a lot of horsepower uh, to the city to be able to do that. And our maintenance uh, fund thereafter will be kicked up at a higher level. So whether your street is on there now or whether it might be afterwards, uh, there's a lot more ability to get to the next set of streets uh, in the future based on getting this much caught up and then relying on maintenance, a higher level of maintenance to be able to do more improvements. So whether you are immediate 
or whether you're a little bit later, uh, your chances of getting a, a poorly uh, conditioned street improved are greatly enhanced by doing this. So those are the things I wanted to just um, uh, emphasize a little bit more. Sorry to interrupt, Lily. I, I had one thing to add to that too. Just this last um, week, the city council made a resolution to only use, uh, only do the bonds for the airport if they did have the matching funds. They wanted to reassure the city um, that that was the plan, and so they made a resolution to to follow what what they've been saying um, just in the last meeting. Yeah, and they couldn't put that little caveat in the bond itself, but there right. is assurance done that that's the only way that that money will be used. So. You know, it's a, it's a it's a great opportunity for us to stretch that money uh, and get a lot more return on our investment. Yes, and I just wanted to um, say something about the sidewalks. Um, the sidewalks are for it, it's not sidewalks everywhere. <laughs> like we're not going to put sidewalks on every single road in the city or every single street in the city. Um, it's like one one point five million dollars. Yeah, no, not not a lot, but it's for areas that do have higher foot traffic or um, or have sidewalks that need repair. So just some people are like, I don't want a sidewalk on every, you know, every place, but that's not what's happening. Um, and it's easier for us to, when we have the funds to put sidewalks in on a road if it needs it when the streets are being repaired and instead of coming back later and doing it. So it helps us be a more efficient city if we have the avail availability of those funds. And then the last thing is all of this money will be a gradual increase. We can't do all of these projects at the same time. And so the city will be selling bonds as needed. Um, so it's not gonna be a sudden, like a sudden rise. Because um, we can't do 11 or $10 million of street projects at the same time. So it will be a, a gradual rise. Thank you, Brandy. I, I also, I'd let everybody know if anybody wants to pick up the signs for their yard, you can pick them up at Hancock Advertising. I sent a message to everybody. They're at 243 Old Tyler Road, right next to Andy Pastas. So thank you very much. And we're opening up for questions now. Thank you very much, Lily and, and, uh, and crew. We appreciate uh, uh, this presentation today. Any questions? I've just got I have a question. Go ahead. This is uh, Terrence Reeves, Concerned Black Man of Nacogdoches. Uh, one of the questions I have is just uh, how are we disseminating this information to the underserved uh, on, on some of this information? Because I've, I've talked to a few people, and I think there's more misinformation than there is information. About some of the things that are going on. Absolutely, Terrence. Thanks for your question. One of the things that we're doing as a committee, we're all working people and we're trying so hard to get out to the public and do some public speaking. Um, we're actually, I'm so glad that you are speaking because we want to reach out to your group so that we can actually have a presentation. You're on our list of people to call. Um, and it's one of those things where we are, we, this came together so late in the game in terms of how we can actually educate everybody. And so early voting starts in October 23. We are pushing and running to everything that we can. We've got a whole list of the senior center is one place that has already agreed that we're going to go talk to. Um, we are actually getting flyers at, at, made in Spanish and so that we can distribute it to the Hispanic community. We're going to the Boosters Club. We're going to uh, Rotary. We, you know, we're speaking to the chamber. Anywhere that we can, I want to reach out to Evelyn Salceda, who actually works at Nacogdoches ISD, and she reaches a large group of the Hispanic community for parents that cannot come to meetings during the day because they're working. And so we're going to work together in trying to get information out and emails, Facebook Live, anything that we can so everybody can be educated in the correct manner. And Terrence, you should be aware that we'll be posting this uh presentation later today on the Chamber's YouTube on the website for the Chamber. Uh, so I would invite anybody that wants to share this, they're certainly welcome to uh, visit the Chamber's website, go to YouTube, and you'll you'll be able to see this presentation in its entirety. So uh, I do want to let you know the Chamber did do a, a poll. It, this is a very, very small sample uh, right now. But if you asked for the update on, on the statistics, first of all, there's a link that Kelly was kind enough to post uh, in the chat section. You can, you can track it 
as the day goes on today. But right now, 86.9% of the people are voting yes. We have uh, about 13% voting no. And again, I remind you, this is a very small sample. Uh, uh, if you ask what the stronger uh, items on, out of the seven bond issues are, uh, Proposition B, Proposition C, and Proposition F were the stronger. Uh, and I'll let you folks visit the website to, to, to take a peek at it. And my suggestion would be you track it uh, as the day goes on today, and we'll have a pretty good sample of, of where the chamber is. But the good news, I think, uh, right now for uh, those of you uh, involved with, with NAC now is that 86%, almost 87% of our membership uh, that has responded is uh, views this as uh, this package is favorable. So any other questions of our presenters here today? Hey, Terrence. Hey, this is Ron. Um, you know, in regard to your question, though, about getting the word out, uh, we would certainly welcome an opportunity, you know, if concerned black uh, men uh, put something together to allow us to come speak uh, to that group or others that you might invite. I mean, we would love to do that. We, we, we want to get as many people involved in this as we can and get the education out. We don't want to be, um, you know, uh, things skewed uh, by misinformation. And so all we want to do is tell a good story uh, that's accurate uh, where people can make their, their decisions. But we'd love to do that if you can put something together. I'd also like to see Ron on that. Um, Alton Fraley, if you guys know who he is, he's infamous in this town. A couple of <laughs> years ago for the bond propositions for the school bonds, he is 100% in support for our uh, what we're doing in educating the public. And he has said that he would come and participate in any way that he can. And so we'd love Terrence if you would come back and we could speak to your group. Thank you so much. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Any other questions? If not, I'd like to thank our presenters here today for this uh, presentation, and I'd invite you to stay uh, uh, on the call if you if if you if you can to hear the other reports coming up. Uh, again, we uh, wish you luck, and uh, we'll let you know the results of the chamber survey in the next day or so. Uh, we'll now move into the reports. I'm pleased to welcome uh, uh, the provost for Stephen F. Austin State University, Dr. Lorenzo Smith. Good morning, Dr. Smith. I think I saw Dr. Smith on. There, no. Nope. Well, I do know that we have with us Ashley Morgan, the director of Visit Nacogdoches. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning. Good to see everyone. Um, so after these past few weekends, um, we're taking a look at how um, tourism was affected and we're really excited that during the weekend of the Old Town Breakdown and um, the Centennial that um, on Friday the 15th, 90% of our hotels were at capacity. And then on Saturday, the 16th, 93% were at capacity. So we're really excited about all of those people that came into town and we hope that they had a really great time so that they wanna come back in the future. And then this past weekend, we had Art Fest among plenty of other things going on. Um, and there, on Saturday, we had over 280 walk-ins, which is almost triple what we normally have on a Saturday. Um, so again, it's just been a really great past few weekends in Nacogdoches. Definitely what we needed after a pretty slow and hot summer. Um, hotel occupancy was down in August for the first time of the year, but um, it's already on its way back up and we're still um, up about, I want to say 16% for the year. So um, things are trending really positively. Um, we are preparing for some conferences that are coming back uh, to town. So um, as you all know, during the pandemic, uh, pretty much all forms of tourism and conferences stopped. Um, and there was a little bit of a lull where I think a lot of these um, groups and organizations were deciding, do we still want to do conferences? Uh, or is meeting on Zoom easier? <laughs> um, but we're really excited that the Texas Downtown Conference chose Nacogdoches. Um, and I don't want to steal Main Street's thunder. It's very much their event, but we're helping out where we can. Um, and that's October 24th to the 27th. And it's going to bring, I believe, about 
150 um, Main Street professionals, and I might be saying that number wrong. Tori might kill me. <laughs> um, but then in February, we have the Impact Conference, which is a student advocacy group, and they are bringing 500 to 750 people to Nacogdoches. Um, and I believe that's February 22nd to the 24th. Um, I'll get back to y'all on that next month to double check. But Anyways, lots of business coming to Nacogdoches. These are all um, people from out of town. And again, if we just put our best face forward and welcome these visitors when they're here, um, they'll feel uh, inspired to come back. Um, so I, I encourage all of you to, um, if you're in the hospitality business at all, whether that's restaurants, hotels, um, shopping, things like that, make sure your employees um, are, you know, putting on their most hospitable attitude and um, giving good recommendations. You know, when people um, ask for places to eat, don't say chilies, you know, things like that. So um, if you're ever curious about um, hospitality training, let me know and I can definitely get you um, hooked up with that because that's something that goes a long way. Um, other than that, uh, just a reminder, if you're hosting any events, make sure you upload them onto the visitnacadocious.org website. That's where we get our information for our weekly and monthly what's happening posts. Um, and keep an eye on your inbox. We are launching a new um, newsletter. Uh, we've been doing one in the past, but this one has a brand new design that's really um, intuitive and um, I'm, I'm really proud of it. So keep an eye on your inbox for an email from me in the coming weeks. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Ashley. Any questions of Ashley? Thank you, Ashley, very much. Appreciate that. I do see we have with us Aaron Windham from the uh, Nacogdoches Independent School District. Aaron, what's going on over there? Well, school is going on. The students had a day off yesterday so that teachers could get some much needed training, uh, smooth sailing. Football's looking good. Everything's coming up roses over here. So uh, we are in comment to the uh, bond information. I would just like to say maybe some of you that went to Nacogdoches remember as kids walking over to parks that are nearby to elementary schools. And I will say that has tapered off some in the last several years because of the condition of the bathrooms as one of the uh, prohibitive items. And so uh, I'm really excited to see that's one of the things on the bond issue because uh, improving those bathrooms will kind of open that up for school children to be able to take those trips to the park again. Uh, so shout out to that. Thank you, Erin. And uh, I noticed just that the school parking lot was, was pretty empty. So I assume that uh, they were out for the day uh, yesterday. So Great to have you with us. Cassandra Stokes from the SBDC. Uh, I see you've been very active in programs and projects. Uh, any report? Um, uh, nothing uh, new from the last call. Uh, we do have our date firm for our next one, which is the hub, how to become a hub vendor. And that date has been firmed up for November the 14th. So you'll see more about that, and Kelly will has told me that she'll get that posted on the calendar. But other than that, uh, the Small Business Development Center is preparing for our end of the fiscal year at the end of this month, and we're just looking forward to uh, tonight's uh, honoring tonight's banquet honorees. So that's it for me today. It's short. Great, Cassandra. Well, thank you. Uh, yep, yeah, it's going to be a big night tonight. Uh, I noticed on my phone, Betty Shin has called it since this call began about three times. So uh, I uh -oh. try to fit more people into the Fredonia that they can accommodate. So but we'll see how that works out. So uh, thank you, Cassandra. Appreciate that. Uh, also, uh, we, I see we have uh, Caroline Garner from the Nacogdoches United Way. What's going on there? Oh, just this and that, Wayne. <laughs> uh, First of all, uh, to connect to a couple of people who've already spoken then with Aaron, for example, we are in the thick of our fundraising campaign at NISD, Nacogdoches Area United Way every fall raises money to, or pledges to for money in the next year to return back to the community to give back to 19 partner agencies. We have already 
chosen to support next year in the areas of health, education, financial stability, to really make a difference in our community. Um, so then we go out and fundraise, we spread word we, to inform people about what we do at United Way and how we would plan to spend their dollars to make an impact next year. And so Aaron and Les um, have been helping us with appointments and engagements at NIC. We've been having a great time going out to the various campuses and and just meeting people out there and seeing great things going on at NISD while sharing our United Way message. So thank you, Erin. Um, and then also we're working with Ashley on plans for the Christmas parade. Here it is, still September, three months off. Well, less than three because it's the first Saturday in December. On December 2nd, we will again host the annual Lighted Christmas Parade downtown. So we're, we are working with Ashley and other city representatives. We have another meeting on that today, as a matter of fact, to evolve what's going to be some of the best, most exciting parade plans yet. So stay tuned is all I'm going to say for now on that. And then another great United Way event we have coming up is our annual Turkey Trot on Thanksgiving. And I'm continuing to announce that now, even though it's a couple months off, because this is the time to start your Couch 5K training and sign up. We do have the registrations open. It's called Annual Turkey Trot. You can find the link for that on, um, on our website, unitedwaynac.org. Um, and then one other thing I want to mention is, well, I guess while, while I'm still talking about the campaign, so since I did mention that, just, I just want you all to know that we are open to coming and talking to any company or individuals, clubs about what United Ways does and how, how, uh, how easy it is to get involved and make a difference just by making one pledge and we do the rest. We just take it and put it out in the community where it makes a difference. So uh, don't be shy. Give us a call or an email about that. And we just, it's a no pressure thing. We just love to share our message and the opportunities there. Um, but then I want to mention a big event, big event, uh, a big uh, potential planning session of reveal. I don't know exactly what to call it. Aaron's in on that with me too. But there is this amazing program called Give Five, and this is this is um, a, a booklet about it. Um, but uh, we have been meeting with representatives from SFA CARI, the Center for Applied Research and Rural in Innovation, and and a small community community volunteers such as Aaron. Um, and uh, we are we have been evolving this plan to uh, bring this opportunity for this program to Nacogdoches. This is something that was created up in Missouri by United Way of the Ozarks um, and uh, another associate of his in city government. They in, developed this program called Give Five. It is a retiree matchmaking, civic matchmaking program. Um, it's, it's a way to give retirees and frankly anybody else who might be interested um, and have the time a place to match their skills and interests with nonprofit organizations that are in need of volunteer help. So this is this goes perfectly with the United Way mission mission. This is why it was evolved or invented by this United Way up, up north. Um, we we match resources to needs, whether those are dollars or people, <laughs> volunteers. So we're very excited about that. Tomorrow, well, these guests from Missouri who created this program are coming to Nacogdoches. They're flying all the way down here. SFA car is bringing them down. Um, to Nacogdoches to share the message and plant the seeds so that we can grow this here in Nacogdoches. It would be the, the it's not anywhere else in Texas yet, and we're, we're better than the, the oldest town in Texas, right? So um, they will be presenting at the Wednesday Rotary meeting tomorrow, and there is a four o'clock open to the public informational session with delicious snacks <laughs> um, at the Art Center downtown. Um, so that's that's just open to anybody who's interested, whether you might be on the volunteer side or you have an organization that could benefit from these skilled volunteers looking for a place to plug in. So tell your friends and come and join us tomorrow. I did in the chat put a link to our United Way Facebook page where that flyer for tomorrow's four o'clock session is displayed. There is an RSVP and that's at the bottom of the flyer. That's all I got, Wayne. Thank you. Looking forward Thank to you, Caroline. I appreciate that update. It sounds like an exciting program. Uh, yeah. Terrence, do uh, you want to give us a, a sense of what's going on with the Concerned Black Men? Sure. We are wrapping up our uh, campaign for uh, volunteers, as used to all volunteer organizations this time of year. 
Uh, we're starting a uh, school mentoring program. We're trying to get all of our applications in so we can get into the school system to mentor the kids, uh, as well as we're starting to even start thinking about our upcoming uh, scholarship uh, fundraising event in February. So we're, we're up and moving at this point. That's great. Thank you very much, Terrence. Appreciate that. Uh, Gary Lee Ashcraft, Sawmill 6. Here I am, Axum Jacks. Uh, we're moving closer to the basketball season. First game, Middle Tennessee at Middle Tennessee in the middle of Tennessee, I guess, on uh, November 9th. And then it goes from there. They come home on uh, the following Sunday and uh, play somebody. So go look at the SFA basketball schedule and uh, come to come to the games. Uh, they're exciting, fast. Uh, uh, we know the team quite well, and they are they they really are good. I, we we think that we'll win the WAC this year, and uh, uh, really excited about this basketball season. Well, I'm really excited about the fact that the Texas Legislature in July uh, allowed uh, or uh, put forth legislation that allows uh, the athletic departments uh, of the universities to uh, uh, get involved with NIL collectives, organizations. So what will happen is uh, uh, the SFA Athletics Department will put up a website, and this is a vision that I had and hoped would happen, and you all or anyone will be able to uh, donate to the athletic athletes uh, through a collective by uh, going to that website and you can click on any sport that you uh, want to support. Uh, and it's not like millions of dollars. It's, uh, you know, there's, uh, our, in our case, it's $10, 25, uh, 50 and a hundred. Uh, so per, per month. So you, you can support that team. The teams are paid equally generally through that process. And, uh, these days athletes are being paid and we want to be in a position to recruit the very best and uh, we have the cap cap capability to do it now. Uh, I don't know exactly when uh, this will happen. I do know that Sawmill Six Man, which is devoted uh, completely to the basketball team, will be a part of the Sawmill Collective that the athletic department is putting up. And so when you click on the basketball uh, section that you want to donate to, it will come to Sawmill Six Man, and we're, we will uh, allocate the money to the players. And, they, they are very, very grateful. They're a very humble, uh, awesome group of young men. Uh, uh, one of the guys said, you know, when we were talking to them about this money, they said it's a lifesaver for us because most of the athletes, they are athletes, and they don't have time to wait tables or whatever, although I did see Nana uh, selling popcorn at Susu's. That was kind of cool. But uh, anyway, we're really, really excited. Uh, uh, we're even going to the business school, uh, according to uh, Tim Bisping, the dean of the business school, and talk to the faculty there. They're excited about us. And uh, 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 Matt Rocco, who's the founder and leader of us uh, at the Sawmill Six Man, will be speaking to them, that kind of thing. So keep up with the Sawmill Six Man. We're trying to do uh, a lot of social media. And as we kind of get closer and closer, it'll be here to the season. You'll, you'll hear more about us. And yes, to the bond uh, uh, election, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it'll go through. I think it will. Uh, good work on the part of the committee. That's it, Wayne. Thank you, Gary Lee. Appreciate that. And uh, you know, we've got two people that I need to hear from. First of all, I want to say, uh, Dustin Beavers, this is your last uh, conference call as chairman of the board today and your big evening tonight. It's great to have you with us today. And I, again, want to thank you for your service to the chamber this past year. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, it's definitely uh, bittersweet. Uh, I just, I don't, without giving too much of my speech this afternoon, but I, I just want to say thank you to to Wayne and the staff. Um, it is amazing. I was telling them the other day at the meeting. You know, you see the all the festivals and the meetings and the ribbon cuttings, but uh, I've been blessed to see the stuff that happened behind the scene, uh, and they never stop up there at the chamber. And there's no way that we could have had a successful year without. Wayne and his staff, and so it's. Uh, I feel like our relationship has grown, and then, you know, I think we had a really good year. Um, there was some. Uh, it was a roller coaster ride. There were some things thrown at us that we weren't not expecting, but when you look back, uh, overall, I, I felt like we had a good year. And the things that I felt that we uh, uh, we still need to accomplish are on Ryan's agenda, and so I still think that uh, those will 
evolve over time and, and the board will, will see what will take action on that. And, and last but not least, I just wanted to say uh, thanks to the NAC Now group. Uh, I felt it was uh, a good conversation and, and I know there's things that are going to be happening down the road that the chamber is going to be a part of. And so we appreciate all your efforts. And uh, I just, again, I cannot tell everybody, thank you all the people on this phone from Aaron to Caroline, Ted, Terrence, uh, board members or committee members. Uh, thank you so much for everything that you've done. You, you've made this last year a pleasure for me. Well, thank you, Dustin. Appreciate it. So last but certainly not least, the Chief Operating Officer for the Chamber of Commerce. I'm going to ask her to close out the, the call. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as you can imagine, Chamber staff in the office is uh, quite busy this morning as we are preparing for the Nacogdoches County Chamber of Commerce 101st annual meeting this evening. So <clears throat> things you can't imagine and some things you probably can't aren't going on all around us right now. And we are so excited about uh, the group that will be joining us this evening at the Fredonia Hotel. So looking at our chamber calendar, just to give everyone a heads up on what's coming up, we have uh, a ribbon cutting on Thursday with Brown Family Health Center on East Main Street, and that'll start at 4.30. Uh, October's ribbon cutting, these are celebrations with our fellow business members uh, in the community. We have a new business, Saraset East Texas, also in October, we'll be holding ribbon cutting for Habitat for Humanity of Deep East Texas. The ribbon cutting for Mr. Bubbles bin cleaning will be coming up, as well as a ribbon cutting for Nacogdoches Memorial Hospital and Progressive Materials Technology. And last but not least, a ribbon cutting at the old university building in downtown Nacogdoches. So just with those ribbon cutting celebrations, we'll be kept busy through October. We have uh, the golf bash coming up. I believe uh, we are now into a waiting list situation for golf teams if you're interested in playing, but there's still plenty of opportunities if you'd like to sponsor or volunteer or be a part of that event in some way. We can help you with that. And the Alive After Five that will be coming up is on October 19th. It will be hosted by Buchanan Wealth Management. So Wendy Buchanan and her crew will be welcoming us on that evening for our business after hours reception. Wayne, did I forget anything? I know we're gonna have more of your conference calls coming up too in October. No, you did a great job. You did a great job, Kelly, that wraps it up. Any final comments from anybody? I do wanna hop on and just say there's a parent engagement event October 28th at NHS that is going to be awesome. A lot of you on this call are going to be involved in it in some kind of way, but it's an opportunity for parents to come and learn some things that parents need to know. It's open to the whole community. You'll be seeing things come out about it, but it's the uh, Parent Explosion 2.0 at Nacogdoches October 28th. Thank you, Erin. Uh, first of all, thank you everybody for joining us here today. Hopefully we'll see the vast majority of you tonight uh, at the Fredonia Hotel and Convention Center at six o'clock. Uh, we've got a nice evening planned and uh, Betty Shin has done her usual outstanding job of organizing. Now all we have to do is execute. So we'll see everybody there. And again, thanks to our presenters today, uh, John and Lily and Brandy and uh, and, and Ron, for, for your presentation, we really appreciate that. And we'll keep you posted on our survey results today. And I'm confident that uh, uh, you'll be pleased at the at end of the process. Have a great day, everybody. And again, this concludes the conference call. Thanks, Wayne.